We're here at ITU Telecom World 2015 in uh, Budapest, Hungary, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Paul Michael Scanlon, who is the president of business and network consulting for Huawei Technologies. Uh, Paul, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Max. Now, the theme here at ITU Telecom World 2015 is accelerating innovation for social impact. I wanted to ask you to begin with, how do you see ICT innovation directly impacting on socio and economic development in China? As I said before, that's a great question. It's uh, this big. Yeah? So let's, uh, let's try and bring something practical down to, from a, say, from a Huawei perspective. You know, I represent Huawei, so how does Huawei see the, uh, the innovation component? <coughs> We like to pride ourselves that we're a very innovative company. And I think for the last 27 years to grow to $60 billion, you must have done something right. Yeah? And of course, it all started with one man and, uh, and a couple of thousand dollars. So there starts the seed of, uh, of innovation just from his own perspective of the DNA of the company. Um, what's Huawei, how has Huawei grown the last uh, 27 years to today? How do we still see this, um, this requirement for innovation? And it's very clear from the board of Huawei that um, without competition, there is no innovation. You have companies like the ITU and of course all the other you know, the regulatory bodies around the world and you know, we're gonna be talking about a few of these things, I'm sure. But um, Huawei believes very much in the ecosystem. So we now realize that we can't just sell boxes and conventional products. We now realize that as a leader, and we've been a leader in the fixed and now in the mobile for a number of years, and the ICT space is significantly larger, just in the cash terms today. But over the next, uh, say, four to five years, we see that our job as, uh, as a leader in the industry now is to accelerate this program. And accelerate the program means to accelerate the ecosystem. And the only way to do that is through participation with as many different parties, because you need different ideas. So from the industry, why it's great to come to events like ITU, etc they're particularly important to bring together different people with different DNA. And in, and in terms of where we are here today, we're ITU Telecom World 2015. We've been focusing very much on the growth of SMEs in the ICT sector and encouraging entrepreneurship here. I know that there have been a number of uh, SMEs have been invited here. and I know that uh, Huawei have got some on their pavilion. Perhaps you could talk a little bit about the value of that. It's um, very interesting. I think this is the first time I've been attending the, this particular Broadway Forum ITU for a number of years as both a guest speaker, panelist and, and chairman of very different facilities. And um, this is the first time that I've seen this type of program. And just now when I'm, I'm talking with the Secretary General, Mr. Mr. Jal, about um, this, uh, the involvement, he made an interesting observation that uh, he had spent almost one year trying to incubate this for this event, for this one day, for that two hour session that we've just had outside. And he was a little disappointed, in fact not a little, I think he was significantly disappointed that so few SMEs had actually participated or had come here from around the world. But then I'd have to say he, was, he turned to me and he was actually delighted by those maybe 15 that did attend and of the quality of their uh, participation in terms of the way they want to engage the big enterprises, in terms of sharing their experiences in how they are trying to develop, grow or survive. And, um, and uh, so the Secretary General made some comments to me and said, you know, Huawei, how does Huawei and how can Huawei help? So we had comments from the SMBs in terms of what they were trying to do and some of their problems. And then they had questions to the larger enterprises on how can we help in this particular area? So, the two things that I think are interesting, number one, that the ITU has started to focus on things beyond its traditional standardization or standards function, which was, you know, the old CCITT days when I was a junior engineer 40 years ago, um, to where it is today, which is understanding that you need this community. So from Huawei's perspective, we have a number of programs from, uh, shall we say, conventional corporate social responsibility programs, which were largely uh, give a thousand computers or devices or put a million dollars here or a hundred thousand dollars there to an incubation program. So the incubation program, what will it do? It will um, uh, facilitate through both pure cash plus training and knowledge transfer together with an enablement of an ecosystem, very micro ecosystem. So it's almost like an investment in an SME. So we identify certain types of SMEs that we think will grow something, okay? Not just their business, but allowed to, allow it to grow and be replicated. 
and that's a, an alternative mechanism and that's purely SME based. Now uh, the, the comment I made at the, um, at the forum just now with the Secretary General was to suggest that um, this type of program is far more effective, should be far more effective, um, in a couple of ways. First of all, the SME doesn't have to go and find the money and have to report a P&L to a venture capital company or seed funder, which he's always under threat of. And the second one is he gets the benefit of an enterprise who's started from there in a market that he understands. He understands the product and where, how it will facilitate and where he will get his money. So he's not, we're not going to get our, our return on our investment through the direct injection. We're going to get our return, and, uh, return on funds through growing an ecosystem. And I think that's a very interesting way of, uh, of approaching SMEs from a Huawei perspective. And that's only one small area. A program we've had for a number of years is our digital services program. And through the digital services program, we've learnt that if we want to sell a digital services platform to an operator, to a customer, there's no value in it because they need the partnerships of all the application developers. So now we have collected through a program uh, some 1,600 um, digital services providers and we go together to customers. And this facilitates that ecosystem and I think this is a great example of uh, enterprises from a vending perspective to an operator to the consumers and SMEs in a real ecosystem development. It's very difficult to do. It's not something that um, everybody's got the stamina for or um, has deep pockets to continue funding and keep it moving. But it's a very successful program today for Huawei. It's great, and it's a it's an in inspiring story as well, from humble beginnings to to the the, 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 the incredible is. company that it is today. Thank and I, I wanted to, to just ask you, in terms of uh, the value of attending events such as ITU Telecom World, you've got a great pavilion here. Thank I just uh, there's obviously been an investment uh, of both uh, of uh, time and, and resources in here. I just really wanted to find out what is the value of attending events such as ITU Telecom World for a company like Huawei. All right, it's um, again I think a, a particularly pertinent question because Huawei always looks at um, which are the appropriate marketing events and then uh, you know from a brand perspective as well as what's the key message that we want to do and what's the purpose. So I, I've personally been thinking about this one uh, on, from my, my, my department's um, perspective but also from, from Huawei's perspective and I was saying to my colleagues uh, earlier on today and, and yesterday that this particular ITU forum I think is one of the best and I think every year I've seen it improve and improve. Now why do I think it's, it's the best or, or improving? So rapidly. First of all, I think the venue has seems to have attracted a lot more participants than I've seen. Maybe I didn't get out as much last time, so perhaps that's, that's something to consider. But the um, the quality of certainly at the ministerial level that have uh, visited Huawei's pavilion, from what I observe, and also uh, from engaging directly at us at our Broadway forum. You know, we always have a theme every year promoting Broadway. We are passionate about connecting everybody, and if you don't have national broadband networks. As a foundation, it, you can't connect anything. So a government can have an ICT um, transformation idea, but if nothing's connected, nothing will happen. And if you're not going to have a machine-to-machine -machine strategy or an analytic strategy, things will, will, will grow very slowly. So this particular event, why I think they're, they're so important, it brings this collaboration together. It gives Huawei the opportunity to reinforce the theme of why we believe broadband is so, so essential to, to uh, development of, of life and quality of life. The second thing that I've, I've noticed is that it allows us to bring together, we think we have about 450 customers globally. So these case studies, as we're doing them, you know, over the last 12 months, things have changed. And we're able to um, not just reinforce the first message, but we're also able to, to demonstrate how the market has moved on, how the technology has moved on, how different um, programs have, have, uh, have, have, have occurred, and success stories and failure stories so that this partnership of companies and countries gets to learn. It was very interesting. We had uh, one, if I may say, from one company, one country in Africa who said we've been working with you for the last two years and finally we're putting ours on track, the NBN. And sitting next to him is the minister from the adjacent country, African country. And um, we're collaborating together so that they can learn from us. It took them two years. It will take the other country perhaps one year. The third country that will come next year, most likely, they'll finish everything in three months. So you can see that the time to market for this type of, um, of business development, if you want to call it that way, that is, is coming down. 
So this collaboration can't happen in any other event. You know, it's, it's very difficult. We could go to sub-Saharan Africa or to Central Asia and have a forum here and a forum here. And you do bring some of these, these groups of people together and give ideas. But I think the ITU here has, um, and the members, is able to bring, are able to bring collectively a bigger group together to foster exchange of ideas. The next thing I, I think why it's so important and if the direction of the ITU continues is particularly down the road of the SMEs because um, without SMEs you don't create competition. You know, they're the ones that disrupt everything. The OTTs, they've been disrupting. They're the ones that make all the big enterprises to take notice of what's happening and to think of other alternatives of how to do business differently. And that creates new dif different business models um, which also raises raises the stakes but also raises the quality I think of of the solutions and the topics so that's why I'm hoping Huawei and expecting Huawei will continue to be here year after year that's brilliant it just my, brings me to my final question really uh, you obviously got your finger on the pulse just looking at, at the future what do you think are going to be the major opportunities or challenges in the ICT sector transformation so pretty much every operator every telecom operator understands that they need to to evolve to transform <clears throat> the key question is to transform into what and uh, having decided that then how to do it and that's always the challenge you know the strategy is great we all have great strategies but what's the execution of the strategy you know what tactics do we do we deploy um, the, tr the the journey that most operators are on so operators understand the challenges of uh, the OTTs, they understand the challenges of real-time, online, do-it-yourself, always on, and, and social, the, the ROADS that we call it in Huawei. They all understand these, so the dri new driving forces. It's not making a voice minute anymore and selling a voice minute. People are consuming differently, the behaviour is changing. It's driven largely by a younger culture. We are all old, old men, right? Uh, we have a different, different view of, of how the world should change more slowly and everybody else wants to do it yesterday. So these, the, the second component is the, the rapid advance in technology. Um, that hasn't happened over the last 150 years, that it's, that it's happened you know, over the last five to six years. So these two factors now mean operators must transform. So if they decide they want to be a digital company, what does it mean? If they want to be a video company, what does it mean? Uh, you know, do they want to uh, ent enter the SMB market or you know, get revenue from this instead of traditional methods? How do they do that? They have organisational problems, process problems, they have capability uh, problems. At least uh, you know, one, one operator in every country is still somehow linked to a government which has government responsibility like employment. Uh, you know, they're very different factors compared with quarter on quarter earnings. So this is the challenge that operators face. What's great is there are so many of these challenges that I think the world is just a great oyster and there's lots of pearls there, so it's good for everybody, I think. Paul Michael Scanlon, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, Max. Thank you. Thank you.